Hey everyone, it's the Drive School Podcast. I'm Pastor Goodman, Pastor Richard. How are you doing? Good to see you, Harrison. Good to see you too, my friend. Uh, what are we talking about today? Uh, we, we always tackle, uh, what does Jesus say about? And then we, we talk about things that he doesn't actually address, except that he actually does. Uh, today, what does Jesus say about a hostile culture? Yeah, hostile culture, hostile world. I mean, we have a, do- a bunch of different ways we can go on this. Um, I mean, we can go with all these different images we were talking before we hit mm. report on this about, uh, you know, Peter getting out of the boat and then looking around and seeing all the wind and the waves and he starts sinking. And both you and I said, you know, he probably just should have stayed in the boat. <laughs> Jesus was coming towards them. It's just simple. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know, um, the other idea too is that uh, when you have this idea of the ark, the Christian church being the holy ark and, and mm-hmm. all the disaster and calamity going around and you're safe in the ark. I think we just come back to the Gospel of John, which Jesus says, "What abide with me, hmm. stay put." We've we've tackled this before, but it's it's one of those things. Like I've heard it before. I know the answer, but like there are no shortage of of problems that I have with how things look right now. Um, I don't like that people don't like me. I don't like that people don't like what I believe, and so like it it seems like well, if if how do I defend my faith to them so that they will like me and like what I believe? And and it's that same sort of attitude that makes us sort of want to start to defend our faith, then as opposed to letting our faith defend us. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think I think maybe we could say it's just using an analogy of um, since we're in football season in the Richard household, uh, you know, with my son playing football and everything. You know, the, the question is maybe, you know, do we need to be an offense and we need to push the ball down the field and put it into their territory, or do like we a need Christian to be a, nation? Yeah, or do we need to be on defense and all that? And I think I think that's the wrong question. I mean, I, I think you're absolutely right that that uh, we defend our faith um, through what we call apologetics. But I think we have to recall that, you know, the whole premise of us having to defend, push the f- ball down the field or hold the line, uh, we're talking about Jesus and he's the way, the truth and the life. And so truth is something that is objective, um, that he is the alpha, the omega, that uh, he is the divine, what we say, the divine logos, that all things hinge on him. And so the effects of the world, whether it's this way or this way, you know, we don't see Jesus at the right hand of the Father saying, "Oh, whoopsie! We, I better, I'm being threatened here in my right hand of power." Uh, we don't see that at all. And so, this whole idea where uh, we as Christians feeling like we have to uh, come to the defense of Jesus, we're portraying him as maybe a little lapdog or some some sort of puppet we have to defend. But he's the roaring lion, Aslan the lion, right? Hmm. He doesn't need to be defended. And so, again, our apologetics is to uh, to defend the faith as far as confessing clearly uh, who Christ is and what He has done. But more importantly, when the going gets tough, um, I would say that we don't necessarily resort to offense or defense. We resort to Jesus. Right. Um, and I think a, a lot of the talk, it's because we're trying to find football analogies to talk about uh, an article of the creed that maybe we're not supposed to be here. Uh, what I mean is we love to sort of talk about God's power in terms of the first article of the creed, in terms of creation, in terms of like, is our side the biggest, strongest side? And do I have all the things that I want to have? And is is my place a safe place? Um, where we really ought to be talking about this in terms of the second article of the creed, in terms of has Jesus conquered sin, death, and the power of the devil? Because if he has, well, then whether or not the world looks safe, we have strength, we have safety, we have shelter. And so um, we we don't need an offense. The devil has been defeated and, and we don't need a defense. We have Christ who is a mighty fortress in whom we can abide. What we need is it's that Sunday school answer. And it's it's wildly, wildly unappealing to anybody who just wants to feel safe. So how do I deal with that, I think? Because that's that's sort of deep down. Like I don't feel safe. And I remember a time um, we talked about uh, Jesus walking on water um, and like, you know, Peter's big issue was that like, really just stay in the boat, my guy. I, I know you want to get near Jesus and like show him, you know, that you can help him or be with him or do all the things that he can do that you can sort of perfect creation the same way that he promises to. But also look at like when it's happening. So uh, Jesus walks on water and Peter sinks in water right after the feeding of the 5,000 when like, okay, maybe this is going to be okay, which happens right after the death of John the Baptist. So we, in in Peter's mind, there is a threat to doing this thing faithfully and a promise that seems to abide in just what if we have a God who makes sure our, our bellies are full. Let's, let's go do cool stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Well, yeah. You know, I, I think, I think the old, the old theologians called this life, the veil of tears, the Valley of tears. Yeah. And I just, I just love, I just love how that's phrased. And it's the Valley of tears. 
and it's for a moment. Um, you know, and Jesus talks elsewhere uh, that it'll be just a little while. I love that phrase. It's just a little while that we're in this valley of tears. Um, and then we have this in our hymnody that we're pilgrims, right? We're sojourners in this life, um, that this world is passing and that we have the hope of the resurrection to come. And so I think it's all things in perspective, you know, understanding that the things right now in this world, um, everything's going to burn as we hear from from Peter, uh, at the very end, everything's going to be burned by fire, just as everything was cleansed by the flood by Noah, uh, everything's going to burn in the very end. And so we can't take it with us, that old phrase. Uh, so we understand that this right now, the here and now, uh, this world of sin, death, and the devil is but a moment. It is a, you know, a little while and that we have the hope of Christ that is coming um, and that it is a veil of tears that it will be a couple of tears for now and the time being, but Christ endures forever. And so um, I've heard it said before too, was it, was it Professor Nagel? He once said that we already have one foot in the resurrection. I'm not sure if yeah. it was him, but I, I love that, that, that we already have one foot in the resurrection. We already have one foot in that. And so that helps us abide in the midst of and all the calamity and all the troubles and the difficulties in this mm-hmm. world. And I would say that comes back to the idea of certainty and assurance, um, that with certainty and assurance that we are with Christ and Christ is with us. Yeah. So the world is not safe, but it is redeemed. And that actually lets you have certainty because the problem with safety in a world that looks like this is that like, that's almost more terrifying. Um, like when you're in the middle of it, you're like, all right, at least I know what I'm up against, but it's, it's the good days that really, really keep me up at night. Cause like, man, that's not going to last. I'm too pessimistic for this. Something is going to go wrong. But if the world is already redeemed, then you're right. I'm already one foot in the resurrection. Let it let it all burn. I, I already have the victory. Um, and that's going to change how I talk about things like safety. Where, where safety is there, great. But I don't need it to be secure. I don't need it to be certain. And in fact, the more of it that I, I seek, the less secure, the less certain I'm, I'm going to be. The people that are going to build a religion on how to sort of create a... a, a um, a safe world that is somehow rooted in God providing God's plan, God's government, God's anything. They are always some of the most insecure because not only are they afraid of what they don't have, they're afraid of losing what they do. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, this kind of comes back to the uh, gospel lesson for this coming Sunday, which is where Jesus says, do not worry about what you will eat, what you will drink, what you will wear and all the shelter and all those things. And what happens ends up happening, we have these future worries about all these future things and we become divided and fragmented. And then the result is for our human nature is to start what gathering these things up and we pull it within ourselves. We put up barriers, boundaries and so forth. And mm-hmm. I mean, I'm guilty. I can talk about this fluently because I mean, I do this. Yeah. And, and, and we, we, we start what, trying to bring it all in and we're divided. Our mind is divided in all these things. And he says, what, knock it off. Look at the bird. And mm. the bird doesn't worry. The bird just does its work. And in the end, the bird dies. <laughs> all right. I mean, and, and, and that's the reality. I mean, and, 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 and so we are to be busy among God's work and, and in our vocations, um, knowing that we're being taken care of, uh, seeking the kingdom. That means not going to find the kingdom as if it's lost, but just fixating mm. on that kingdom of God, uh, the forgiveness, grace of Christ and what he's a- accomplished for us knowing that all these other things will be added to us and the very end um yeah like that bird we will die and i hate saying it that way but we will but guess what even that's okay uh even that's okay because we will be resurrected from the dead and uh given a brand new heaven and earth and all things will be uh given back to us as a great profound gift it's it's a great comfort so if if i'm if I have to go to school and I, I don't feel safe, if, if if things aren't the way that I want, if I have to look at a, a, an election season as we we're barreling down towards this thing and I and I don't feel comfortable, I don't feel secure, and I'm worried about what to do, um, where should I actually look then for an answer for any kind of certainty or comfort? Yeah, that comes back to our Sunday school answer, Jesus. Jesus, yeah, Jesus. We'll just stay there, Pastor. Thanks so much. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. What else do we say, right? No, Christ. I mean that's a great place to end. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. All right. Well, we'll uh, we'll see you next time. You too. Thanks. Bye.